supposed to do with your own microphone. How was that? Uh -oh. Okay, we're getting started. So, questions? Raise your hand. Mark, you guys uh, started five new guys on defense yesterday. Are, is Brady still kind of not necessarily experimenting, but looking for guys that kind of fit you know, his standard, looking for that consistency? Or how would you describe kind of the process on defense right now? Uh, part of it is that just that, you know, trying to find the ideal personnel. Part of it was who was available um, for the game. And, and so that just had, you know, that moving parts aspect to it. But, yeah, definitely still trying to find the ideal combination um, everywhere. Um, secondary um, played played harder, fit things a little bit better. Obviously had a bunch of penalties that were due to mainly – hand placement which then put hand placement and initial alignment with them which then put them in a in a vulnerable position and and that that again is on on us as coaches to, to iron that out can i just follow up on that because i wanted to ask if any of those five guys really jumped out whether it's carlberg or moy or somebody else that you know just stepped up in that opportunity at times you know again i thought they both those guys in particular played hard they played hard um weren't weren't perfect you know dre's still in there trying to feeling his way through things and played played a little high got out of his gap a few times uh but he wasn't he wasn't alone in that um and jonah did some some you know had had the big play obviously and then and then created a bunch of other situations that that uh kind of set the edge defensively and and overall a step in the right direction for him in the back there, Scott. Mark, on that final play, it was a, a pass call, but it almost looked like Dakota didn't give it a chance. Do you feel like he's maybe a little quick to, to pull down and run right now? Well, that's the kind of the first thing and the last thing we talked about in that situation. You, you got to, you know, you got to give the play a chance, whatever whatever that is. If they bring uh, six, seven, whatever, you got to, you know, just get the ball out of your hand and, and give give the play a chance. That that last play scenario is is a tough one. Um, you know, and, and the guy just kind of flashed in front of him. That was his first reaction. And so, again, we'll, we'll, we'll coach that up and, and, and continue to, to work on those situations that, that, that come up. Joey, in the back. A lot was made about the atmosphere, the big crowd, first road game for a lot of young guys on, on your squad. How did you think the team handled the atmosphere, that road environment in this one? Well, I think good, good and bad. And, and, again, this is, you know, me first as as far as it just we had some guys that, that lost their composure uh f you know four instances of, of personal fouls that that really hurt us and and uh a uh, couple other just decision making things that that went down but as far as just the atmosphere you know, i thought they handled the crowd noise you know better than than you might expect um uh you know and and did, did a lot of good things despite the outcome uh, but that's that's obviously the only thing that, that we focus on, and then the million things that that could have done, that we all could have done differently to to change it. Rob, as you go about trying to clean up penalties, what are the sorts of things you can do in practice to to just play with more discipline? Uh, just that, demand it, and and you know we're gonna have have a little little discussion about that tomorrow, and and we're gonna have kind of a, a team team deal um and and just continue to, to hammer away at it the 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 you know obviously we've had a, maybe one guy that's had an issue with it repeatedly um there's a couple of those have come out of left field and so part of that is just composure one guy was you know it was a situation where he was the the second guy to react and and you know we know how that always how always plays out but we can't can't do that especially in that situation and, and give him a free first down and a in a just a total swing and field position. Matt? Last night, I think, kind of got lost in the shuffle. J Johnny Reagan and, J and Awesome Alto's play. Would you take out of that and their impact their impact on the defense? And did anything else maybe pop up on film that was a positive on the defensive side? Well, defensively, again, we played we played a lot harder. We played played you know m much harder. We covered <laughs> despite the you know when we got the kick catch interference, uh, a couple guys let up. We covered better. We also covered better and kind of pulled up when the ball's on the ground. And so we, you know just all those little that little six inches more of play, and there's two you know game impacting game changing plays and 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 uh, and so just seeing that seeing that in the wake of a loss is that that makes it that much tougher but hopefully almost that much you know that much more durable and, and everlasting as far as the lessons learned question yeah for my understanding um what is the process for determining whether to go for two after a touchdown and who makes that final decision 
Anything, anything that's bad in this program is my responsibility. So any any element of you think that that uh, of that that's bad is is my fault. Um, we've we've done it for many years. Um, a lot of teams do do what we do uh, in terms of we're trying to get an ideal look, and uh, if it's there, we run it. If it's not there, we shift back in and kick it. And we need to, we need to, I need to coach, coach that better and, and get, get a, a total understanding of, of what we want done. And we will get that done. Mike in the back. Yep. Do you look at the chemistry and the timing between Dakota and some of these receivers and, and look at it like it's a little bit slower than what it was maybe this point last year? Some of those throws that early on that, um, let's say, Vernon had with D.C. always looked like they were on, and it seems like timing or chemistry may be a little off between Dakota and some of the guys running routes. Um, I don't know if it's necessarily a chemistry issue. I think there's just things, again, we need to, to coach the execution, coach the rhythm, coach the timing, uh, the route tops, just with, you know, there's, there's, there's stuff on both ends of a throw. There's protections that are involved in that. And so a lot of times when it's, when it's a throw that's missed by six inches, there's, you know, some other, other thing at play. Um, but, uh, I think the I think the overall chemistry there is good. Yeah. We've talked a lot about the two-point tries, but do you feel like the first half, the way it ended of not getting the first down, the punt return, and then letting them back into the in the end zone scoring had maybe a bigger impact than those, you know, getting the, ment- the momentum into the second half, and then they scored again? Well, that was certainly a, a huge swing. Yeah, I think, you know, anytime, uh, you know, going for it on fourth down, we, we convert. And you know that that's that's a that's a, a big deal, um, but that yeah the twenty twenty was twenty to seven and, and getting the, the the big punt return, that's a huge play you know and 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 again we we were <laughs> had it perfectly fit and we just need to stop literally stop and make the guy fair catch it uh, or or tackle him, um, and so again we've got to we've got to coach that and and execute it. Thanks, guy. You guys preach competition to, till the whistle. Yesterday after the game, Dakota mentioned in that environment. Sometimes, if you're if you're in the trenches, it might be a little hard to hear the whistle. Do you? Is there any truth to that, or did you give any leeway to your guys with that? Uh, sometimes, I mean, I don't. I don't think that was the 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 instance yesterday. Um, I think that that the officials do have a tendency to not blow their whistle because they're worried about a fumble, which I understand, and let you know replay take its course, um, which is tough. Uh, but no, this is this is one hundred percent on us and on me. Mike, oh, the week after a loss, moving forward, looking ahead, do you find that teams are more fired up? Um, that they learn more, that they respond better than than say the discussion of learning more from week one to week two. I sure hope so. You know, and it, it uh, that'll that'll say a lot about about how we respond and and. There's there's guys that that don't really you know whether it's you know punt coverage for for instance we can talk until we're blue in the face of hey this guy's going to drop it this guy's going to drop it and then he does and you're four feet away from it instead of a foot away from it that that's a big deal you know in the in the wake of a loss and and all those all those little things all the things that we can do as coaches all the the details of communication all you know the, everything that everybody talks about is is amplified and so yeah i think i think it does take to that point for for some guys in this generation to to really get slapped in the face that you try to reinforce in 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 after a victory after the first two point conversion that you were successful on uh, was there talk of just you know taking the extra point um, that you earned and and then kicking pats after that um, what's your kind of philosophy on? Um, yeah, that? again, we're we're aligning in a in a formation, and if the the look is ideal, we're we're going for two. If it's not, we shift back in and kick it. And and uh, you know, Nebraska actually did the exact same thing, and they shifted in and kicked it. And so, um, you know, that's that's where we need to we need to coach that that better as far as everything, the execution of it, the decision making process, all all those things. Matt. A lot of guys left the games with injuries. Now you got them back and having a chance to rehab. Do you anticipate everyone being able to be available at some point this season, or is there any guy that might not be ready? To- Don't have any confirmations, uh, which for us obviously is not a good thing. Um, Going to have to wait till tomorrow. Got some preliminary stuff on a few guys, but nothing, nothing concrete. In the back. 
I'm sorry if this was already asked because I was having recorded troubles. Um, how much do you think the youth of the team played to uh, the amount of penalties that happened in the game? Um, I don't. I don't. I don't think it necessarily was the youth of the team. I think some of you know. Um, some of our most experienced guys had had penalties and and that's again where those guys need to rise up above all that and and play fundamentally sound play with discipline uh particularly when we have other guys out at, at those positions um but but again that's that's on me that's on that's on all of us a lot of guys at the end of the game wanted to compare it to maybe michigan state last season can you get a sense of obviously you just take a loss from it and that's the the major thing that stands out, but as far as the way this group kind of maybe galvanizes as a team, is that what you want to see? Well, certainly you, you want to, you know, like we're talking, you want to respond and you want to rebound, rebound, you want to play better, you want to come together and galvanize and, and all those, all those things that we'll talk about. Um, and yeah, there were, there were some similarities, you know, this was a little bit um, different, you know, got, got up more, um, had a couple chances to to make plays, you know. Even even when when that ball was in the air to Charles at the end, and, I mean, I'm I'm like laughing to myself after everything that just happened, this, you know, and and that that gets knocked down, and so um, no frustrating, frustrating, uh, great environment. Both places were great environments, and and uh, uh, got to turn the page. Chantel or Andrew? Yeah, I've got one. Um... Mark, it's kind of tough to ask Brady about the defensive line because I know his expectation for that position is so high, and so he'll always say that he's he's not thrilled. But I was just curious for you right now, given the scheme change, given the new faces on the D-line, is your run defense about where you thought it would be or behind or ahead? <laughs> well, I think, you know, again, that that's one, one aspect that, that we need to, to improve a ton, and, and uh, I don't think that's any – any secret uh but that's not always the the defensive line it's kind of like you know the the quarterback overthrows somebody and it's automatically the quarterback's fault there's you know route involved protection involved there's run fits by the the linebackers there's run fits by the secondary um all those things that, that we can kind of do together and so certainly that will be a different challenge in terms of of how they deploy themselves playing colorado but some some very similar um plays and actions so there'll be a little bit of carryover rob do you have a question the explosion plays by the running backs made the numbers look pretty good but you know the guys without royce how do you feel like overall those guys handled themselves pretty well you know i thought uh pretty well um protection wise just operationally we were pretty good um yeah i mean we were talking about that this you know this morning of 300 yards rushing and no turnovers and lose and that that's you know again the 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 two point aspect the the penalties and that that just just kind of highlights those again uh but uh for the you know by and large first big big time you know time when he was out they did well andrew did you have a question maybe a little bit last year i guess yeah with the case of cameron hunt uh, he's obviously the way he's played the last couple of weeks um has seemed out of his character is, is he in line still maybe get the starting nod this week or would you hold him out and let a younger guy get his try first we'll see we're going to kind of manage some of that stuff in-house and uh we've got got a couple things that some few people are going to get get done not necessarily just him um but uh yeah just wait you know to a personal file every week is is too many is there any specific kind of uh punitive i don't know steps you would take for those personal fouls that regardless if it's every week or once a week that you kind of have a guy go through to, um, just, I don't know, just punishment? Um, yeah, I mean, that we, we do some stuff uh, daily, and we do some stuff as a, as a team. That's going to that's gonna change this week. Um, but, we yeah, we handle that in-house, yep. Going to wind it down. A couple more questions, Matt. With the injuries at receiver, and Tristan Wallace and Dylan Mitchell, two guys that had a lot of people talking about them during fall camp and spring for Mitchell, do you anticipate they might have to to burn their red shirt to because of availability of guys ahead of them? We'll see. Yeah, that that's one spot. Those guys the, those guys are very dynamic. Um, they're kind of at different stages in terms of of just knowledge of the system. Um, but we'll see. They're very talented guys, and and one and or the other hasn't been totally available. Um, and so we'll we'll uh, we'll see where that goes from here. 
Andrew Spantel, anything else? Yeah, I've got two more real quick. After two, go ahead. After a non-conference, taking a long view, are there things you wish you would you were farther ahead on, or things you're pleasantly surprised you uh, you progressed maybe more so than you expected? What What was the first part of the question? A long long view of what? Just after three non-conference games, after the non-conference schedule, now that you can kind of you're heading into Pac-12 play, it seems like a natural time to look back and kind of a measuring point for you guys as a team. Are there are there things that you wish you would you were farther along with, or things you are pleasantly surprised you, gotcha. you are ahead of schedule? Yeah, um, I don't know. We you know we're so much just in the day to day of of trying to make everything better. Obviously, defensively, uh, as Chantel alluded to, you know have have to stop the run better, and that will continue to be tested as we as we roll along here um our this alignment of dbs played played better but now we need to to clean up all the the penalties and some of those self self-inflicted wounds um not not happy with the the penalties in the last two games came out very well in that first game um and then uh nothing's nothing's you know where where it needs to be or totally beyond where where it should be and so we're kind of just in improvement mode across the board Dave, last thing for me, I swear. Um, Mark, the the Sam Fultz tribute was, you know, pretty much hailed universally as one of the classier moves um, in college football. What, can you take us through the genesis of what went into that decision to have the bouquet at the 27 yard line? Well, I think sports, you know, can do a lot of things and and focus uh, a lot of times on the wrong things. But certainly, everyone's experienced loss. Everyone has experienced uh, hardship, and and we just. Um, Matt Wogan and I uh, thought that would be a, a fitting tribute to, to his family and obviously his teammates and, and the fans there. And uh, yeah, that was pretty pretty emotional and we were trying to do it under the cover of darkness, but uh, uh, it was it was a, a neat deal and um, Matt Wogan should get all the credit for that. Anything else? Anyone? Do you have your players of the week? Um, yeah, we don't do players of the game. Uh, in a loss, but the scouts of the week, Dylan Kane was the defensive scout of the week. Uh, we did not have an offensive scout of the week, and the special team scout of the week was Connor Bergren. Thank you. Thanks.